grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and also with you. Welcome to this service this morning and some sad news to impart. Two loyal members of our congregation have died in the recent days, David Breeden and Betty Hills. And so we remember them in this Eucharist and in our prayers. We pray for Margaret and her family and for the family of Don and Betty. Christ calls us to share the heavenly banquet of his love and with all the saints in earth and heaven, knowing our unworthiness and sin, let us ask from him both mercy and forgiveness. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray as we remember those who have died in two world wars and wars since, and also remember members of Her Majesty's forces serving abroad at this present time in places of tension. God, our refuge and strength, bring near the day when war shall cease and poverty and pain shall end, that the earth may know the peace of heaven, Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
a reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do, who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left, until the coming of the Lord, will, be, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds, together with them, to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus spoke this parable to the disciples. The kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, There will not be enough for you and for us. You'd better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the Gospel of the Lord. the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We regularly pray in the Lord's Prayer for God's kingdom to come. Your kingdom come, your will be done. John the Baptist proclaimed that the kingdom has indeed come in Jesus. The kingdom of heaven is near. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. And furthermore, Jesus wants us to know that we should enter it and that the kingdom will come in its fullness at the parousia, the second coming. In this kingdom season, during the year of Matthew, we just listened to another parable of the kingdom the parable of the ten bridesmaids, a parable full of warning. The parable has allegorical features. The bridegroom is the Messiah. The arrival at midnight is the parousia. And the bridesmaids are Christians waiting for Jesus to come. The wise bridesmaids are those who have practiced the better righteousness of the law. The foolish bridesmaids are those who have sat loose to the law. And the parable tells us that even if the Messiah is delayed in coming, Christians must be watchful, like the wise bridesmaids who keep their lamps ready. Keep Awake, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. There's no doubt that the ten bridesmaids are all invited to the wedding banquet and they all have opportunity 
to share in the joy of the wedding. There's no doubt that they're all excited and there's no suggestion that the foolish bridesmaids are wicked or evil in any way, only that they had been neglectful as certain things required of them. It was a very small matter to ensure that they had sufficient oil and light, but they had not done so. They could have been prepared, but they never bothered. How often have we not bothered to do what is required of us? Made excuses, for example, for not saying our prayers and welcoming Jesus into our homes. There comes a time when it's too late for doing what is required of us. And in the case of the foolish bridesmaids, the night comes and then it's too late to buy oil from the dealers for their lamps. The time for meeting the bridegroom has passed, the time for entering the wedding banquet has passed, and all for the want of some oil, a little thought and preparation. There is a saying that we should never put off now, today, anything we do not want to leave undone forever. To live our lives without due care and proper attention courts disaster. We ignore the things of God at our peril. The words of the bridegroom to the foolish bridesmaids clamouring to come into the wedding feast are indeed terrible. Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Have we taken the time and the effort to get to know Jesus, to be his friend? Or have we been too preoccupied on other things? Can Jesus say to us, I don't know who you are? Jesus doesn't want to exclude us from his kingdom. He's given us an open opportunity. Only we can exclude ourselves by excusing ourselves. There is a danger that we may never be aware of Jesus' invitation and coming to us, and we miss the loving relationship that is offered to us. We may miss his many and repeated invitations. But is Jesus going to find us not there when he comes? Jesus continually seeks us out, but we may not give him our attention. The parable also reminds us that the Christian faith is about a person, the person of Jesus. He is the centre of our faith. He wants us to let him into our lives in a personal relationship of God love. Christianity is primarily about the person of Jesus. Yes, the scriptures bear witness to him and contain many of the essentials of our faith. But they are not infallible and inerrant in all matters. The doctrines and teachings of the church throughout the ages also bear witness to him. But again, they're not necessarily infallible. We need to look at these witnesses more critically, perhaps, than we do. I don't know if you're like me. There are passages in Scripture that make me cringe. There are passages in Scriptures that give right to questions and doubts. 
And some things indeed may be hard to believe. However, as individual Christians, our faith is in Jesus, a living person, and with whom we can experience a living and loving relationship. But to enter that relationship, we must get to know him and let him into our lives. He wants to know us, to give us his love, but he doesn't want us to delay getting to know him forever. Yes, when the parousia comes, we're not going to be asked whether we understood everything in the scriptures or all the doctrines and dogmas of the church or whether we understand every word of the creed. Jesus really wants us to know whether we know him and he knows us. Christianity is about a person. Our faith is based on experience experience of Jesus himself in our lives. And it's an experience that we share with our fellow Christians and with those who have gone before us and witnessed to in the scriptures and the teachings of the church. Yes, the essentials of the faith are contained in them. But finally, we must be Wise Christians, ready for the parousia when it comes and not neglectful of what our faith requires of us. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, help us to know you, to welcome you into our lives and may we be ready waiting for you to come in glory at the Perusia, And we ask it in your name. Amen. We stand and affirm our faith in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father.
Lord, we pray today for your church, carrying a gospel of forgiveness and freedom, which is so much needed in our world. Thank you for those with a gift for sharing this good news in evangelism. Thank you for those with a gift for sharing this good news in the way they live. Give us the courage and the willingness to be your witnesses in ways that are generous and respectful and which come from the overflow of our love and delight in you. Fill us with your love so that the world may believe. We pray for our church here at St John's. For Helen, Paul and Patrick. For our church wardens, Eric and Jill. For our LPAs and all who work for the furtherance of your kingdom in this place. We hold before you our bishops, Stephen, Karen and Andrew. This week, we pray for the General Synod and the decisions that they have to make. Lord, in your mercy. We pray today for countries where there is war, random violence and only fragile peace. Give to those who are trying to make peace an inner certainty of their calling and constant patience in their negotiations. We hold before you the Holy Land, the terrible violence that has taken place in Israel and the people of Palestine and those struggling to live in the conditions there. We also pray for the people of Ukraine and Russia and the war in Ukraine. For those who have lost loved ones. May hearts which have been darkened by violence discover a different light and a better way. May the ways of democracy and the ways of forgiveness coincide at the conference table. Today, on this Remembrance Sunday, we pray for our own country, for our King and Queen, Charles and Camilla, and for all those who still suffer from the effects of past conflicts, and all who remember loved ones today. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for the spiritual health and welfare of our communities, first for the well-being of this church community, that we may be a spiritual family, a household of faith, where people are welcomed and nourished. We pray particularly for those who lead this community by election, by position, or by popular acclaim. May their leadership be that that of a servant, and their goals, those of the kingdom. We pray for local remembrance services today and those who will take part. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who are going through times of trouble, some perhaps in our families, some in our church, some in our wider circle of friends. We know you to be both Lord and healer of your broken world, and we ask you to touch with your generous love all those who are in our hearts today because of their special need. May your love flood their lives with hope and healing in spirit, mind, and body. We pray especially for those commended to our prayers, for Dorothy, Veronica, Anne, Catherine, Shirley, Pam, Denise, and Louise. (coughs) Lord, in your mercy. Finally, Lord, into your hands we commit those 
who have run the race and kept the faith, even if that faith was known only to you and now have gone to their reward. May your light shine upon them forever and our lives be richer because of their memory. We pray for all our service men and women who still work to keep us safe and all members of our own families and friends who we remember today. Among those from our community who have died recently, we pray for Ian Kingsbury, Rita Riley, David Breeden and Betty Hills. And in the year's mind, we remember Ken Kentish. Lord, in your mercy. Keep us, Lord, in the joy and simplicity and compassionate love of the gospel. Bless us this day and those whom you have committed to our care. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. To crown all things, there must be love, to bind all together and complete the whole. Let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Let us offer one another a wave of peace. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. 
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should always sing of your glory. Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. But you are the hope of the nations, the builder of the city that is to come, your love made visible in Jesus Christ brings home the lost, restores the sinner, and gives dignity to the despised. In his face, your light shines out, flooding lives with goodness and truth, gathering into one in your kingdom a divided and broken humanity. Therefore, with all who can give voice in your creation, we glorify your name, forever praising you and singing. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross, we proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great High Priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your Spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Christ, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Just a reminder, after you've received communion, there will be anointing available in the North Isles. So if you wish to be prayed for, have hands laid on you, please go, and you can go for yourself or for someone else. It's very simple, you don't have to say anything. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life body of Christ keep you in eternal life the body of Christ keep you in eternal life the body of Christ keep you in eternal life the body of Christ keep you in eternal life Keep you in eternal life. The blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Okay. The blood of Christ keep you in eternal life.
God of peace, whose Son, Jesus Christ, proclaimed the kingdom and restored the broken to wholeness of life, look with compassion on the anguish of the world and by your healing power make whole both people and nations through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. There are the inevitable notices, of course. There's quite a few of them. There are new sign-up sheets at the back of the church for raffle prizes for the Christmas hamper. Please do sign up to contribute an item for the hamper if you can. Also, sign-up sheets for help with setting up and setting down Christmas fair and Christmas tree festival, as well as the cakes. Please do look at Mike Webber's notice about nominating a char charity in the weekly news. If you don't receive this, please note we are asking you to nominate a charity you might wish St John's to support. Do have a word with Mike. If you can't email your nomination, you may hand it into the office with a short write-up about what the charity is or does no more than 50 words. Do feel able to join us at the 11 o'clock at the War Memorial today where Reverend Helen will be leading the short act of remembrance before the parade returns to St John's for the 11.30 service of remembrance with the Royal British Legion. Everyone is welcome to attend this service. Coffee today after this service, will be in the parish hall, not in Northreach. Do get your Christmas tree entry forms to the parish office, preferably by the 17th of November, entry forms on the back table or in the office. And lastly, please sign up for December readings in church on the sheets at the back. There are still places to fill. Would you please stand for the blessing? Christ the King, make you faithful and strong to do his will, that you may reign with him in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and those whom you love, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.